2020 to order and the first order of business is pursuant to Governor Lee's Executive Order 16 which allows for video conferencing meetings which has been extended by Executive Order 34 to the end of June. We need a motion to agree that this will be a video meeting. Do I hear a motion? Commissioner Dodd, Sec Commissioner Gooch, uh, please call roll. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. There's a couple things before we get into our uh, actual agenda that I'd like to discuss. One is I've had a uh, meeting with our mayor to discuss our 21st meeting of this month and that's when all our nonprofits come in and most of you know normally we'll have 30 40 50 people or more at that time and what I've asked the mayor to do uh, and I'm asking this committee to uh, give me the go ahead on this or not it'll be your decision to make is to send a letter to these nonprofits. Now, the, the budgets that they're being offered this year are exactly the same as they were last year. Uh, there'll be no changes, or at least from the mayor's recommendation, unless one of us decides to, or one of the commissioners makes a change. But <clears throat> our suggestion uh, is to send a letter to these folks and ask for their consent. If they agree with that, then to send us a note saying that they agree and not show up. Now, reason for not showing up, for obvious reasons, uh, to keep the crowds down and keep everybody safe. So uh, I would open the floor for a recommendation or discussion on that. I move that we do that. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Johnson makes a motion. Do I hear a second or any other discussion there? I'll kind of cut y'all short. I'll second for discussion. Okay, Commissioner Gooch seconds for discussion and go ahead if you have a comment to make anybody. So is this motion just for the uh, um, the charities? Yes, the, the nonprofits. The nonprofits, that, that, I'm sorry. Yes, it's Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, members of the committee, I I had great hopes of assisting a lot of our not-for-profits every one of them that has applied this year are excellent they do a lot of service as 501c3s in our community they help a lot of people unfortunately COVID came along and and uh, uh, it made us re-examine our budget uh, I have not recommended a cut to any of them have not eliminated any of them all I'm asking is for them to try to get by with what we gave them last year. Uh, so that is my recommendation, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, uh, they accept what they got last year and then your motion is to, or, or the what your wish would be is that we send them a letter and just let them know that they're getting what they got last year and there's no need for them to come and crowd the courtroom with, uh, with a request when they're only gonna get what they got last year. Now that's not to say that you know, if they disagree with that, as far as I'm come. concerned, they, they can come. They can come, make an appeal, saying they, you know, every 501c3 that I've, I'm aware of, the ones I'm affiliated with, are all losing money. They're all hurting. Uh, everybody's doing virtual fundraisers, whatever they can do to stay afloat. But at the same time, at least we, we the county commission, my recommendation is not to cut any of them. Uh, to try to give them what they've got and see if they they can struggle. Everybody's having to 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 uh, tighten their belt. So your letter would be clear that they do have the option to come That's in. And, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks. Any other discussion? This is basically a continuation budget for them. So it's a kind of they, continuation. They all in agree, agreement with that, of course. Yes, sir. Mr. Pearcy. Was there any department last year that got uh, more because they asked for it versus some another department that did not get anything and would would they get the same extra amount in this above everybody else or was everybody the same last year? 
I'm not sure what you're asking, Commissioner, but on that pink sheet in your budget, it's at the end of it's your budget. At the end of section three, there's a cardboard pink that tells what the budget was for 1920 and then what they requested for 2021 and then what the mayor has recommended. I just didn't want somebody to get more money last year than the rest of them did and get the same amount mm -hmm. more this year if they weren't going to have the opportunity to ask for more. Well, you could see some of them did ask for more, but the mayor's recommendation pretty much is the line, you know, is the same as 1920. The only, the only one I can recall is Sam Davis home. We, we put a, we gave an extra $5,000 because they were doing some roof repairs, but we have rolled that back to their previous contribution this year. Thank you. Okay, is there any other discussion on the nonprofits? Hearing none, call roll, please. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Piercy? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. And one last item before we start into the agenda. Uh, if you recall last year, you know, we normally make a roll call vote anytime there's money involved. Uh, this year, uh, pursuant to the executive order we just voted on, we're required by law to do a roll call vote. And what that's going to do, as you well know, these budgets get pretty lengthy. It's going to extend the time that we're in here. When, in an effort to try to speed this up, I want to throw something out. You know, if y'all agree to it, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. We can do a roll call vote on this. But maybe the easiest way to throw this out as a suggestion is if we treated the mayor's recommendation as a uh, consent agenda, Therefore, we wouldn't have to vote on each item that comes up. But just like our consent agenda, if you have any change you want to make, then I would entertain a motion to change the mayor's recommendation by whatever you decided you wanted to change. I may not have done a good job of explaining that, but basically it's, it's add to only trying away. to add to or take away from. Right. Any, anything that we'd add to or take away from, we would actually offer a motion. Otherwise, we would let the mayor's recommendation stand. Now, like I said, this is not me trying to push the mayor's agenda at all. As a matter of fact, there's probably a few things that I want to change as we get into it. But uh, this is an effort to expedite these meetings and make them a little bit quicker. And, I'll open to the floor to discussion on that if you all want to try that. If not, we'll continue and as we review each one, then we'll take a motion to either accept or deny and then do a roll call vote. But what I'm suggesting again to recap it is basically the mayor's recommendation would stand unless one of us decided to change that. And tonight is not the only time you could change it. Our next meeting, I think it's, <clears throat> or at least the meeting before, uh, June 3rd is a meeting before publication. Of course, you could change it then. Our regular meetings on June 4th, you could change it then. Uh, like I said, there will be multiple chances to change something if you see something later. But having said that, I'm, I'm done with that. If y'all would like to do that, then I'll listen to a, a motion. But I'd like to hear your discussion on that, please. Basically, Mr. Chairman, what you suggesting is the sheet that we have here with all this the mayor's recommendations that we go ahead and uh, approve those subject to any department head uh, if they want to suggest anything or or make any comments is that correct well i, I you're, as far as i'm concerned the department's heads will still present and you know if they have an objection to the mayor's recommendation i just assume we vote on that up and down i'm just saying if there's no no one that has any differences with the mayor's recommendation that we accept it as basically as we do our consent agendas and if any of you decide you want to make a change you know we'll take a motion on the spot so i hopefully i answered your question I, i'm not doing a good job explaining this that's but okay like, and we will be we will be voting on the entire budget as a whole for publication as we always do with the changes that come up, come about in these next 
four meetings that we're going to have before publication. That will expedite matters. I, I would make that motion. Okay. Well, I do have a motion to accept that. Second. And a second, Commissioner Dodd. Uh, is Mi there any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, this is Rhonda Allen. I have a question. Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, so it sounds like we're basically going to do it the way we would have normally done it in the past, which is the department heads will present, we'll look at each line item, discuss those if we have any questions. And then at the end, we're in the past, we would have, someone typically would have made a motion to accept the mayor's recommendation. And then we would vote on that just by voice vote. So it sounds like that's exactly how you're wanting to do it here and you're just wanting to discuss the change because of the electronic format, where typically we would have done a voice vote um, by roll call. Is that correct? I, I believe you've got a, a good a good feel of what I'm asking to do. Yes, that is correct in, in my mind. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this isn't something I brainstormed up on my own. I had some high, uh, help. Mark actually made a suggestion and I've tweaked right. it just a little bit. and. Uh, at any rate, so up to y'all. If you would, Mark, call roll on this, please. <clears throat> Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Fee? Yes. Okay. So we've got that taken care of now, and we'll go ahead and get into our meeting. And our first item is uh, community learning. And Lisa, you want to tell us what's going on there, please? Yes, let me get there. Okay, that is um, the uh, recommendation is Mr. Chairman, I received a, and members of the committee, I received an email from Michael Payne today. Let me pull that up. The email was dated uh, today, 10:14 a.m. from Michael Payne. Says the budget for CLC looks fine to me. No objections. I will not be able to attend the Zoom meeting. I talked to Mark about it, and he told me uh, to let you know as well. Let me know if you have any questions uh, or concerns, Michael Payne. I accept your recommendation. Okay, committee, uh, does anyone have any questions about the uh, actual budget? I just want to confirm this is the education program at the Juvenile Justice Center? That's correct. Motion to approve. Okay, now we don't need a motion, a motion. if everything is, if no everybody question. agrees with it. Uh, basically, this is consent. So we're ready to move on to our next item, which is the Board of Equalization. And Mr. Mitchell's here, so welcome. Yeah, come around to the mic. I'm going to remove this right here if that's all right. Um, I am completely in agreement with the mayor's recommendation for the Board of Equalization budget, as well as the property assessor administration budget. With those two, I have absolutely no qualms with whatsoever. Mayor, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, my recommendation is the 23,200. Is that for? Let's see, I'm going to have to catch up here. It's on page one at 43. Okay, so 23,200. You've heard uh, uh, 
a property assessor, and he's in agreement on both the Board of Equalization and the property assessor budgets that the mayor's recommendation has recommended. Are there any questions from the committee? Hearing, hearing none, those will remain on our consent agenda. Let's put it that way then. And now we're ready for reappraisal. And I believe that's yours also. Uh, I also agree with the mayor's recommendation on the reappraisal budget. I have no problems with that one whatsoever at all. Mayor, do you have any comments on that? No, sir. My recommendation is uh, one million. Uh, reappraisal. Reappraisal is uh, one million. One hundred sixty-nine thousand nine hundred sixty-eight. That's on page thirteen, and then on page twelve, my recommendation is one million three hundred and twenty-two dollars, one hundred fifty-three, three hundred twenty-two thousand one hundred fifty-three dollars. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. This is Rhonda Allen. Go ahead, Ms. Allen. On the reappraisal line item 317, data processing services, that's an increase there of $31,600. Is that the new software that we approved? Yes. Thank you. She was asking about um, the 317 and reappraisal, and that was the increase for the just just appraised. appraised. Just appraised. Her, her question was, her question on, the was reappraisal. on reappraisal. Was on reappraisal. We're on reappraisal now. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't hear. Rhonda, your <laughs> yeah. your audio is a little bit light. Rhonda, directions. that's why. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we're on the reappraisal budget. Uh, on 52.310.317, uh, that is for the software systems that were approved. Raised. Commissioner Allen, did that answer your, your question? Okay, it did. Are there any other questions or comments on the reappraisal? Uh, the, the, only, the only thing that I would like to request the mayor's recommendation was for one million one hundred and sixty nine thousand. Our approved request last year was for one million two hundred and thirty eight and, and respectfully we we have a position for an appraiser that we really need to have coming into reappraisal and it's very conservative. My request would just be for one million two hundred and thirty five thousand dollars which is still three thousand dollars less than what was approved last year and it's it's only about sixty five thousand dollars over the mayor's recommendation so you want to add one deputy you want to add one person one it's it's a position that we we were not able to we had it open but we weren't able to fill it because we had three positions that became open in the course of operation over the year. So we filled three positions, but we still had a fourth position that was open that we were gonna fill that we still haven't filled yet. And we, we have to get that person in and have time to get them trained prior to reappraisal in 2022. We'll be doing the yeoman's amount of the work through 2021 and it takes about 18 months to get someone trained up so we are about at the end of when we need to be getting someone brought on board to have them train and be able to actually contribute before reappraisal and our numbers look good M mr mitchell <laughs> what did uh, um the estimate for the position that was um to be added back, uh, my calculations would be 52,838. Okay. Yeah, because it was, it was 34,952 for the position, and I was just using that calculator 
that was sent, and it may have changed since the version that well, I had it, sent over. It would add insurance. Yeah. I didn't know if you if you added back the insurance health and insurance benefits. that would go back to it. Yeah. So it's 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 thirty four thousand dollars, but it it would it it would benefit our office greatly and the ability to get information that Lisa needs and that the commissioners need that you will all need to have property on so that you can levy a tax against it because if we don't get it picked up you can't levy a tax against it and that means that you may have to have a tax increase a tax rate increase and none of us want that okay you've had a minute to hear Mr. Mitchell's request and Lisa just to clarify did you say if he got this one position that would add fifty two thousand eight hundred and thirty eight dollars to the mayor's recommendation yes okay I just wanted to make sure all the commissioners did hear that and uh, I'm open the floor to questions or uh, a motion if you want to make a motion or we'll let this stand as a uh, consent item it's up to the committee now With Lisa's uh, recognizing that it's 52, did you think it was 65? Is your would your request for your budget be less than one, two, three, it five, would, seven, yes, ninety? It, right, it would Some be 10, less than that. Less or whatever amount Lisa says it is, calculating it out of trust. Your 20, 20 budget was 1.228. Yes, sir. And you're asking for 1.2 uh, to about the same. Yeah, one point two three something, whatever it comes out to. <laughs> one million two hundred and twenty-two thousand eight hundred six. Right. Six thousand less than last year than this current. Yes, sir. It's less than last year's. I just know that the the there's no greater source of income for us than property tax. I want to make sure. I don't know how many deputies a department needs, so I just need this committee's help. Help me understand, but I, I don't want this critical office understaffed. I know there's been time we've needed stuff from that office, and it's been difficult to get new plats uploaded that get dispersed to all of the bodies that need it. Uh, the last one we did took weeks, um, and that doesn't even count towards the value of appraising property quickly, effectively, and efficiently, which generates hundreds of millions of dollars. So. I don't want to casually dispense with your request for another person, but I do need this committee to help me justify it. It seems justified. Help me. Or do y'all concur? Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Allen. I have a Go question. Um, my question is, I thought the whole um, selling feature behind the new software was that we were not going to need to add staff. So I'm confused why we're needing the software and staff. You want to address that, Mr. Mitchell? Well, basically, she said she thought the software was the reason, the reason that we purchased the software was to not have to uh, hire more staff at this time. Uh, that's, that's a very good question. Well, we have the software to, this is a position that we had already, it was in last year's budget, but we simply didn't have the opportunity to fill that position. So if we don't fill that position, we're actually taking a step backwards. We wouldn't be, it would be difficult to do the job without the software and without the additional people because we still have to have people go out there and with new construction, pick them up, uh, do physical reviews on properties and make sure that they're accurate. So we can do a lot with computers, we can speed a lot of things up, but all that really does is it leverages us to buy us time uh, to prevent us from having to hire more people than we would actually have to to do the job. So but that's a very good question and it's a very good point. Uh, but it's we've leveraged technology for the last eight years to get us to the point where we are without having added really any extra positions to the office and hired any extra people. And that's only been because the commission has been gracious enough to allow us the opportunity to buy the technology that gets us the information that our citizens need. 
So thank you for bringing that up. That is a very good point. Mr. Johnson. Please uh, clarify something. With the addition of this person, the budget would actually be less than what it was last year? Yes, sir. Even with this person, it'll be less than it was last year. Okay. Lisa, you concur with that? Okay. I don't hear any further discussion. Not hearing any, do I hear a motion to amend the mayor's recommendation? Got a question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. So Gooch. I want to make sure I'm on this, on looking at the right information. So you're saying that the budget that you're requesting is less than last year? Yes, sir. That's not what I'm seeing. It's with with the additional fifty two eight thirty eight for the reappraisal, it would be one million two twenty two eight oh six. It is less than the amended budget of one million two hundred and twenty eight eight sixty seven, but more than the original budget of one million two oh one eight sixty seven. Okay, so so it's the it's the mayor's recommendation that it's right. less. It's, it's the mayor's recommendation that. with the exception just adding that one position back in. Mr. Piercy. Do we have to have an answer to this tonight? Can can we take this under advisement and come back and revisit it later on throughout this budget process? We can revisit it at any time. Uh, however, I, th I think for expediency's sake, we need to go ahead and, and either approve what the mayor's done or, you know, make this change that he's asked for tonight. And then we can, either way we go, whether we do anything or nothing on it, we can go ahead and come back to that. Like I said, before publication, June the 3rd, we'll have a meeting. Uh, everything's open then. Also on the 4th, our regular meeting, we could go back and look at it then. But uh, that's up to this committee if you want to make a motion or to let this stand as a consent item and continue. Okay, do I hear a motion? Let me ask one more question. Okay. If you don't mind. Commissioner. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Mayor, so um, you disagree with the one additional team member or employee? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> Commissioner, uh, Mr. Mitchell had three uh, vacant positions. Uh, I see uh, Sonia. How many, Sonia, how many? Um, uh, how many of the five vacant positions the department has, how many were posted last year? Three or three or IT. I left those in and then he had two for appraisers um, and I removed two. An position and one, one was an administrative position, one was an reappraisal position. For the fifty-two thousand, and I cut, I pulled two and left the three IT. I know that he uh, posted an IT position, and I know that he did post a um, appraiser position. But I honestly, without going back into the uh, system, I, I couldn't speak. I, I rem recall those right off the top of my head. Sure. Well, I, kind of like Commissioner Allen, uh, I I felt like that the way. The explanation on the the software was going to keep us from having to hire more additional personnel, and with pictometry being able to allow them to sit at their desk and actually see the flyover um, and be able to look at all the buildings and everything else, they, they're not having to get out and travel like they used to. So that was my recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Again, I, I don't want to beat it. So. Um, the pictometry that we did approve, we use the word pictometry, but the new software we did approve, I thought you still had positions open that we were going to let you fill and the software. This is not new people. This is trying to continue to fill the positions you've had open for over a year. Yes, is sir. Is that correct? Am yes, I sir. And you're 
going back to, hey, I still need that person we approved last year that you never got yes, sir. a field. So, Commissioner Allen, I, I don't think that we're, we, I don't think we're um, not appreciating our commitment to the software. I think we did approve that. I'm understanding that this person that the assessor wants to hire is not a new person we didn't know about. It's a person we thought he was going to get when we approved the software. It's still a position never filled. I did not explain that very well either, Mr. Chairman. I, I feel you. So I'm going to make a motion to support the amended budget that the assessor presented with Lisa's number of 122806 as opposed to 1169. Lisa, is that number correct? 122806? 1222806. Which is some 66,000 less than the current budget. Okay, Commissioner Dodd has made a motion. Do I hear a second to amend the mayor's recommendation? Commissioner Johnson makes that second. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, this is Robert Stevens. I saw today where the state's sales tax is down like 30% or 40% for the most recent numbers that they received. And before we start adding positions back or adding equipment back or vehicles back, I think we ought to probably hold back and see what our revenues look like. And we can always circle back to this. I'm very sympathetic to what he's asking for, but before we commit to doing something or give him the impression we're going to add this position back, I think we need to get a better understanding of what our uh, revenue is going to be. So I am going to very respectfully vote no on this amendment and just hold the thought on this until we get a better idea of what our uh, revenue is going to be because I don't want to overpromise and then end up having to take something away later that we could have just said no on the front end for. Commissioner Dodd. Um, did did y'all correct me? Did last year in some quandaries over raises and did we establish some positions and raises and ask the department head to hold up until we had a better grasp of revenue? Uh, so I wonder, Commissioner Stevens, if perhaps if the motion had an approval of this position, amend the budget to reflect that but some caveat to hold up on hiring until we see some revenue numbers between now and June 26th or whatever. That makes sense. I understand what you're saying or what you're asking there. You're basically saying, hey, we can go ahead and vote this in and then change it if we see that the numbers are not good. But that goes both ways. I mean, we can, we can do that or we can change it. Like I said, we're gonna have multiple chances to make amendments to what we do tonight and the rest of this budget. So that's up to you you guys sitting here. The Commissioner Johnson, you seconded. Do you see any need to uh, amend our motion at all or just roll with it like it is? Let the vote count. In the scheme of things, I don't think that the amount of money, $52,000, is that what you said, Lisa? overall scheme of things, the fact that this is a position that he had to start with, he just wasn't filling, I don't think it's going to have that great an impact uh, what we vote on right now. You know, so we can, we can always address it later on if, if, we, if, we see, if we can't see light at the end of the tunnel. So, but I don't have any problem with it right now. Okay. Uh Commissioner Dodd just stated that his he'd let his motion stand as it is, and so does Commissioner Johnson. Is there any further discussion? Mayor, anybody else? Oh, sir. Hearing none, let's call roll. Commissioner Gooch? No. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? No. Commissioner Stevens? No. Commissioner Allen? No. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner P? No. Motion fails. Okay, motion fails, so we're actually uh, adopting the mayor's recommendation on this one. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Appreciate Mr. it. Mr. Chair, um, just a comment. I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Stevens 
that um, this is probably the best way to go forward. But in the end, if we, we need to circle back, if things are different, um, and I think that the way this process is set up is that we can do that. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Gooch. All right. Our next item is human resources. It's on page two. Welcome, Ms. Stevenson. Good evening. Um, the budget this year versus last year, the, the main difference um, is one of the, the main differences is the testing line, which is, I'm not sure in your budget book on what line that would be, but the testing line is line 322, if that has that 51310322. There was an increase in that uh, line item of 39,460. And the reason for that increase is um, the state put into legislation, it's called the Barry Brady Act, and it's where we offer our firefighters a cancer screening on an annual basis and a physical on an annual basis. And those are um, items that we currently don't do on an annual basis. We do upon hire for the physicals and then as needed for the physicals throughout the year. The cancer screening would be completely new. And so if you take our existing firefighter population and those who opted to participate in the program, it's an opt-in or opt-out, um, that's the additional cost that's going to cost um, in addition to uh, some other testings that are required by the state now, such as TB and Hep B and all of our departments that um, work with inmates or probationers and those type things to make sure that we are protecting um, them. So that is the main difference in my budget this year. When I reviewed all the line items with the exception of the payroll, and I exclude the testing. The budget is actually $7,360 less than it was last year um, for just everything except for salaries and the evaluation and testing. So I'm open to answering any questions. Otherwise, I accept the mayor's recommendation. Mayor's recommendation is 604334 is there a new position in there for a, a new supervisor or, or director? Not a new director, I hope, but I, there is an assistance <laughs> position in there, yes. Because that's a seven, it looks like a $70,000 increase. And I know we talked about this at steering committee that your office is overwhelmed and needs additional help. But I just wanted to mention that that's also an increase in the budget. Yes, sir, what I mentioned is uh, the, the savings that I was talking about was all things excluding salaries is what I said. So yes, that position would make a difference in the overall budget. Okay, sorry. That's okay. So um, on 101, why is that a little bit less? Why is it down? Yes. There's one day less next year. <clears throat> there were two uh, 262 days in the uh, work day in the tw 1920 budget year, and so next year is 261. Okay, is is 101? Is that is that what you are, Sonia? Yes, sir. But, yes. Is, but I'm just kind of curious now, if if the, someone is salaried at a position, is that regardless if there's an extra day or? Y yes. Because uh, we calculate on the days, the number of days in the in the calendar year. The pay table is based on 26 weeks. But sometimes it hits exactly 26. Sometimes it's 26.2 pay periods, and so you know, so the budget accounts for those days. I, if we're, gonna go. see that, we're probably going to see that all along. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mayor, would you like to make a comment? Or yeah, the, uh, those only the only two increases, uh, of course, was in line item 105, and that's basically taking uh, creating. I, I've actually gone in and worked with all the department heads and asked them, you need to find you a good number two um, person who you can depend on and train in the event that something happens. If you're involved in a car accident or you come down with cancer or something else, you've got a good number two that can step in. And Sonia works on a, a skeleton crew. It's, it's, it's uh, crazy, the schedule that she has and, and all the 
all the balls that she, she tries to juggle. Um, uh, and I told her to try to find somebody that she thought that she could bring in in that good number two position. So that that is new. The 69,507 is my recommendation. And then of course, the based on the state legislature passing uh, those testing for the firefighters who are, are oftentimes uh, kind of like the 9-11 first responders who went in and uh, several years later come down with, with cancer because of the, even though the uh, uh, they wear air packs, many of the carcinogens that they breathe in, their sweat, sweat pores are open and all those uh, uh, particulates are absorbed into their body. Uh, so that 89,460 are the only two increases in her budget. Uh, but we're still, I'm 604, 334, less than the 610, 228 is the department request. Do I hear any comments or questions from the committee? Hearing none. Mr. Chairman, this is Rhonda Allen. Go ahead, Ms. Allen. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say my concern here is the same as I actually had with um, Mr. Mitchell's request, and that just simply is I'm, I'm reluctant to add staff on the first night of budget hearings. I'm a big proponent of every department having a number two. I think that's really critically important. So I'm not discounting the value of the position. My concern is I don't know what our financial situation is gonna look like. Um, and if we waited a little bit closer to, to the end of June, we'd have some idea. And, and I know in the past, it seems like we've kind of kept sort of a tickler file of those those issues that we, you know, had great interest in funding if there was an opportunity, if we felt like, you know, we could cover that expense. So that is, that's my only hesitation in this is just, like I said, to be adding positions on the first night just makes me uncomfortable. Okay, you've heard the discussion there. Is there any other further discussion? Now, do I hear a motion to amend the mayor's recommendation? Hearing no further discussion or uh, a change to the mayor's recommendation, we'll consider this part of the consent agenda and move on. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stevenson. All right, next is the county attorney. That's on page three. Assuming. Mayor's okay. recommendation. Uh, yeah, my, my recommendation is 264-760, which is the same as the department request. No changes. Okay, Nick, would you like to make a comment? All I can see his face, so I don't know if you've heard me or not. Good evening, uh, Chairman. Uh, nothing to add. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Mouse no. move. Great, um, Mr. Chairman, I don't have anything to add. Just um, echo what the mayor said, no change budget for last year. And we uh, desire for the uh, committee to, to approve that. Okay, so you accept the mayor's budgets, what I understood you to say. You're breaking up a little bit, so. Okay, you've heard the mayor's recommendation also heard Nick yes. giving the thumb up there. There, That was loud and clear, Nick. Thank you. <laughs> Do I hear any discussion, questions for the mayor or Nick? If not, do I hear a motion to amend the mayor's recommendation? Hearing no discussion or recommendation, this will also become part of the consent agenda and we'll move on to the election commission on page four. Mr. Chairman, my recommendation is one million and one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 267,000. This is uh, a presidential election year and I believe uh, Mr. Farley is gonna be needing I think we just talked yesterday. He wants to be able to put at least one glove on every voter. 
uh, in both the primary and the general um, postage, uh, Mr. Farley. Yeah, postage is um, well. We've got a two election uh, budget this year versus the current year we're in as a one uh, one election budget. So there's a difference there, just in the number of poll workers that we're actually working. So there's an increase also too. Um, Postage increase is going to be considerable um, with what we've got with absentee uh, voting that's being uh, projected, and then also too just our this current year's uh, has exceeded our budget year just in postage because of the the amount of registrations and the amount of voter cards that have to be sent out because of it being a presidential election. Uh, then also too um, we have a request for our poll books need to be. Uh, we have requests for poll it has to be updated because we've actually uh, have lost some that are older, and so we that gets us to what we need to be able to, uh, based on the turnout, be able to conduct the elections. So I accept uh, the mayor's recommendation. Okay, you heard the uh, Mr. Farley and also the mayor uh, request. Do I hear any discussion or questions, Mayor? I've got one question, Mr. Farley. It's been some time since we looked at your budget. Uh, do you get any HAVA money on these election cycles? We're actually, uh, you know, what we, do, we do not. We're actually getting a reimbursement uh, on the PPP, the March election, that will come before June 30th. So there will be one hundred and forty, hundred forty-one thousand dollar reimbursement back on the March. That's the only one that we receive. Uh, reimbursement or funding on now through the COVID situation, uh, we're getting probably around three hundred to four hundred thousand in addition to ha handle COVID, um, you know, um, precautions, things that we're having to take put into place. Also, uh, the increase of uh, handling for uh, the the absent the um, requests and postage. So anything above and beyond what's normal would be allowed for uh, reimbursement there, like. You know, well, we typically have 2,000 um, absentee ballots cast in a presidential um, November election. You know, there's projections we're going to have 50,000 um, this November. So, you know, that $48,000 in post, I mean, 48,000 uh, extra um, mailings, that posted would be reimbursed. And so those type of things um, will come uh, out, out of that money. What, what line item is that, Mr. Farley? I'm looking at 348 postal charges. Is there another item, line item on the... Well, well, this here, I mean, the hobble money, what he's referring to is that's money that, that flows from the federal government to the state. So that money we'll actually submit for reimbursement once we actually have spent that money. So that won't be reflected in your budget right now? Well, my, my, my goal is, is that some of this money that we've gotten postage here and also some of my um, uh, part-time labor, which I've had to increase to be able to handle that, will be monies that will get reimbursed back. Some of it is, you know, with the uh, PPE, PPE, other type of stuff um, uh, that we're putting uh, or implementing because of COVID is included coming out of that, but also so some of the existing stuff I'm expecting to get reimbursement on, but also too, what's gonna to be above and beyond what we have in our budget. I shouldn't be coming back going, okay, I need $40,000 more in postage because if I do, it's because it's gonna be reimbursed back after we incur that cost in the November election. Okay, that, that was my main question and concern is, you know, we've got a lot of elderly uh, people that don't need to be exposed to coronavirus. And it, depending on you know how that looks later uh, near election time, that could make a huge difference on how many people want to vote absentee. And I just want to make sure that we've got the money in there to allow those folks to be able to do that. But the way you're explaining it, the federal government is going to offer you say up to three hundred thousand. Is that correct? Well, actually, there's been an X amount of money that's been um, in the CARES Act. Actually, has gone from. Uh, the federal government to the state. The state has has taken that money and has uh, divided it up amongst all 95 counties. So based off of what uh, our needs are uh, and what I what I've actually submitted requested for uh, is 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 in that range. 
Okay, so you f you feel secure with this budget as it stands in? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Committee, any questions for Mr. Farley or Mayor, anybody? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Go ahead, please. Um, and this is really just out of curiosity. Thank you. This is just really out of curiosity. On line 341, or I'm sorry, 351 under rentals, the department requested 2,500 and um, the mayor approved 5,600. I normally wouldn't bring out an amount that small, but it's really almost double. And so I'm just curious um, why the department asked for less and, and what got added in. That was the lease that y'all just approved. Okay, the biggest difference on that. The lease for the postage machine. Thank you. Okay, so you're saying that 56 amount above the his requ initial request of 2,500 was for a postal machine rental. Le lease on a postage mas machine instead of him coming over to the courthouse, I think they're going to place it over in the Goldstein's building. Um, in the basement. And w the, the commission. That's correct. Said. What we have, see, what we have with these number of ballots, we don't have the ability to do the postage on that. So what you're doing is you're leaving ballots over there as part of that process unattended and they're, they're votable ballots. So what you, you know, so you can't leave those over there for the post office or postman to pick up. So, and also that volume, if we're, processing that many we've got to be able to be able to get the request to get them out the door to get them in the mail because they have to be returned back uh in that short period of time is that so our rentals actually covers where we rent uh facilities like the new voting location there in smyrna uh, that's close to you the early voting site we pay rent for the, uh, the use of that uh of that church uh we uh, pay also it's a non-governmental building we pay rent then also too, we rent U-Hauls to be able to haul all the equipment to set up all of those locations. So that's, and of course, we've got more equipment to set up for a presidential November. So that's the reason why there's an increase in that. Lot. I don't know also. Right. Yeah my, yeah, my main curiosity was just how you requested less than what the than what the mayor had authorized. So just apparently well, we just caught we just caught something you know in translation and it's fine like i said i wouldn't have normally brought up such a small amount if it wasn't nearly double i know it's an election year a, a presidential election year so i'm not begrudging you any of the pennies you need to to pull off the democratic process i appreciate you right well, and, and, and with that because that was a last minute ad it was one of those things after we started going through our plan of operation to handle this volume so it was it was something that was added after the fact uh, and that's the reason why the, the uh, before the budget committee last week of getting that done because it was just the last minute ad because of the planning. Uh, I, I think we looked at Mr. Farley's budget back in March or early April sometime and I just learned of this request of how to handle this postage machine last week. So that was added from the time of his original request to what my request is tonight. Ms. Nolan, you got a comment? Too? Yes, just just as a matter of kind of process, how we do is after meeting with all the department heads, you know, what we are um, sending to you as the department request, that was the request as they came to us. Any changes that we have, we do that through the mayor's recommendation. And so this was one that came after his request was initially put in and like I said it was like this last Thursday that you approved the lease agreement for the postage machine okay any other questions or Miss Allen did that answer your questions okay looks like we're good uh, do I hear any other comments hearing none do I hear a motion to change the uh, mayor's recommendation Hearing none, we'll add that one to our consent agenda and move on to the register of deeds on page five. Mr. Chairman, my recommendation is uh, 457916. Department of request is uh, 455486. If, if you look under uh, line item 499 and 709, 
Both of those are other supplies and materials. I believe in data processing equipment. I believe uh, Lisa, she has her own funds. She has uh, DP funds that cover a lot of uh, a lot of the things that related to the DP equipment, the data processing supplies, maintenance agreements, uh, so data processing services. Line item four eleven. The data processing supplies out of that as well. That um, the amount for the. Um, other supplies and materials for, for air purifiers and the uh, estimate for a bulletproof glass front. I wanted to uh, say about that on the line. Uh, one second. Ms. Talborn, we're having. <laughs> we're Hold on. <laughs> Okay, you're muted now. Uh, we were getting an echo. How about now? Oh, that's loud and clear. Go ahead. Okay, on my uh, line 499, um, we're going to just take that and zero it out. 16,020. We've been able to. Uh, make some arrangements with this year's budget to take care of those needs so you can just zero that line out and then the line items that would be coming out of the edp not the general fund would be 317 334 411 709 and we're going to add to this year we're going to add the line item 711 uh furniture and fixtures because we're going to be purchasing some microfilm cabinets there's a lot of the film that we uh, are being developing so with that, um, we're about the same on everything. The only thing that's different is we're going to be upgrading server, and that's the um, 709 one that you see there, and that will come out of the EDP restricted fund, not the general fund. Everything else is relatively the same. So the amount with taking out the 16020 would bring the bottom line to 441896 Ms. Dahlborn, do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Okay. Folks, you've heard the mayor's recommendation and Ms. Dahlborn's assessment well, there also. I guess on this one, we would need a motion to amend the mayor's recommendation to 441-896. I believe that's correct. Is there any other discussion or a motion to that effect? I think he moved. Commissioner Johnson, was that a motion to uh, make that change? Okay, Commissioner Johnson moved to change that recommend, the mayor's recommendation to 441-896. Do I hear a second to that motion? Second. Commissioner, second. Commissioner Gooch seconds. Also, I got a late second from, I believe, Commissioner Stevens. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, call roll, please. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Mr. Dodd? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Dahlborn. All right, we're now moving on to planning and engineering, page five. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the uh, department request is uh, 1,268,214. My recommendation is 1,188,267. Okay, welcome, Doug. <laughs> Mike. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we uh, concur with the mayor's recommendation. Uh, we don't have any uh, changes or anything that we would like to propose on that budget, and we're fine with that. Okay. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Please continue. On the line 308 consultants, it was um, reduced from your request of 180 down to 120. What are we not gonna do this year that you had wanted to do? Yes, we had placed some uh, extra money in that budget item to perhaps 
do a like an office study of the Goldstein building area, you know, for planning and engineering building codes uh, to try to find out how to best maximize the space. We just kind of threw a number out there, 50,000. We weren't sure how much it really was going to cost. We just threw some uh, threw a number out there. Uh, the other uh, portion of that that's being reduced, so that'd be 50,000 of it. The other uh, 10,000, uh, we put a little bit of extra money into our budget for uh, some possible dye trace studies that Dr. Ogden has uh, does from time to time for the county. Uh, we had originally proposed 15,000. That got reduced to 5,000. So that was, that's the extra 10. But everything else in there, so we got 5,000 for that uh, die traces, and we've got the remaining money for the uh, second part of the comprehensive plan, long range transportation plan update that was approved. Very good, thank you. Okay, you've heard the mayor's recommendation and also uh, the director's comments. Do I hear any comments from the committee? Mike, you want to add anything or you're good? Okay. It's our engineer off to the side there says he's good with this also. Do I hear any comments from the committee? Hearing none, do I hear a recommendation to uh, change the mayor's recommendation or a motion to change the recommendation? Hearing none, we'll accept this as part of our consent agenda and move on. Thank you, Doug. And thank you, Mike. Okay, next up is Stormwater, I guess that'll be Mike, page 39. Mr. Chairman, my recommendation on stormwater is uh, 277 083. Department request is two, uh, excuse me, 362 725. Hey, Mike, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, one thing I would like, uh, I think I asked Lisa to check, was line 205. I think that needs to be reduced. Um, that was for an amount if we had uh, been fortunate enough to add another employee, but this year we're not going to be able to do that. So I think that was left over uh, and needs to be reduced. I'll just come back if that's okay with the committee when I have time to, to review that and make sure that can be reduced. So I'm thinking it needs to be around uh, a little over, a little under 27,000, which should reduce it uh, neighborhood 11,000 from the total. And that should put us back a little bit, a um, little over 4,800 from last year's budget. If that is correct, that we can reduce that. Lisa, you're saying that that does need to be corrected? Well, I want to go back and you know, take the time to just review it to make sure. Okay, while she's looking at that, does the committee have any questions for Mike? Okay, we'll let Lisa scroll. He is there. absolutely correct. There's, there was a request for position. Let me take it out. I, I gave her the option to add it to my salary, but she said that was not an option. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was a uh, joke. <laughs> a poor one, but that's some of that engineer humor I've heard of. <laughs> Not very funny. No. Yeah. Not very funny. Zanies. So we're good. Uh, with that change, we uh, I'm I'm good with the mayor's recommendation. So what was the final? Well, I'm not, you know, I'm getting there. Hey, you know, you've got to hit the right button. Fifty-seven. That was fifty-seven eight hundred. One more down. Fifty-seven eight hundred. Okay, that would take the bottom line to stormwater. Where's? Okay, uh, two sixty-four seven sixty-three. 763 or 53? Six. 264, 763. Okay. 264, 763. Okay. And what line item was being? Sir? What line item was we taking? That was 205. 205, uh, employee and in, in dependent insurance line. That changes to 26,110. 
Okay, so you've heard the recommended change there. Is there any other discussion on that? Here, no discussion. I'll open the floor for a uh, motion to change the mayor's recommendation if that's so moved. what the wish of the committee. So moved, Commissioner Dodd, and that'll change that item from 277.083 to $264,763. And do I hear a second? Second, Commissioner Johnson. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call roll. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Pearson? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mike. Next up is the Next up is the county buildings. That'll be on page seven. Mr. Chairman, the uh, department request was four million eight seventy three two oh nine. My recommendation is three million five eighty four one fifty four. And let me. Uh, everybody's going to say, "Wow, well, you really cut Ben." Um, but there are several large ticket items that that I cut out of of his request, uh, some for roofs on some of our buildings. However, uh, because of um, COVID and, and sharing by the state, we're gonna qualify for um, a pretty good sized grant. So I'm planning on, I'm making a list and I'll come back to you after we, we uh, uh, fill out that grant, li grant list of some big ticket items um, that we can qualify for. So that's why I removed several of those uh, requested items in there. And that was before uh, we realized we were getting that grant uh, when Ben made his original recommendation. So we should be able to cover some of his roofs and uh, uh, for some of the other buildings. Hey, Mr. Mankin, would you like to comment, please? I am accept the mayor's recommendation. Okay, we'll give you a moment, uh, committee, to look over this. Do I hear any questions for either the mayor or Mr. Mankin? I've got it, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. So, Gooch. So we're looking, you're saying, Mr. Mayor, on line 707, building improvements, you're thinking that we can get some grants to make up for that, the cut? Yes, sir. We have until... 21, I believe, to April 30th, April 30th of 21 to, to uh, submit that back to the state. Every city and every county got a grant. We got a pretty good sized grant based on our population. This coming from the state, um, I think we'll, we'll be sending our request in much earlier because I don't want the money to run out. Okay, cool. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the committee? On Mr. the part-time personnel, we've Just got... Just a second. Commissioner Allen, go ahead. On line 309, contracts with government agencies, that decreased by $37,000. And then on 399, other contracted services, that went up um, close to $50,000. I'm just curious, are we just moving um, items within his budget, because I know sometimes we will reclassify certain expenses, or are we eliminating one service and picking up another one? I'm just trying to figure out what the, those are pretty big swings in numbers. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on this year that's different than last year. A big portion of that, the 309, is uh, previous years we were paying the city of Murfreesboro for the landscaping around the courthouse, and I think that is going to move from that to a private contract the ADA we've we've added some to take care of some of the ADA requirements as well is that on 499 or is that on the other Miss uh, Allen? that will be on 499 we split it between 499 and actually 335 I'm sorry not not 399 I'm sorry yeah, 335 it's where we we were having to um, 
step up on some of the ADA. We've got an ADA um, we're going to have to pay for because we own the building at Kittrell. And since that roof came off, I've talked to the chairman about that, and now's the time to go out and fix the, the um, uh, restroom uh, while it's under construction and putting the roof back on after that, that uh, uh, windstorm that they had. Um, Ben, what other ADA? There's a, there's a list for just about every building that we have. There's going to be some improvement that we'll have to make. Yeah, uh, Sonia is our ADA coordinator uh, and had to send the. Have you sent your report into the state, Sonia? It's actually on the county's website. We have a transition plan. It took us a couple of years to go through this process to review every building with the assistance of Ben, uh, Tanya, Doug, Mike. We went through uh, primarily Tanya's group and Mike and Doug went through all the buildings. And so uh, and the federal government's requiring uh, that we make these uh, corrections. They said within 10 years and we're trying to have ours done within five to make sure that we're in compliance and show that we're making a good faith effort. So there's still several things from doorways to signage, um, some things with restrooms, putting the foot kicks, making sure that we have Braille uh, on the doors um, for people who are um, sight impaired and things like that. So there's a, a list of things on our website that shows all the corrections that we're, we're currently in the process of making. And that's uh, $4.99? $35. Or $3.99? $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.39. $3.
two positions for that. As yeah, well. two two positions for the. I, I think the the new term it was eight months. Now they've extended it, but we'll be, we'll be starting construction what next week. The 27th. 27th on the old judicial building. And so he'll have to hire two maintenance people to take care of that building once we're in in 10 months. Okay, you've heard the request. Are there any other comments? Hear no comments. Do I hear a motion to amend the mayor's recommendation? Hearing no motion, we'll accept this as part of our consent agenda and move on. Thank you, Mr. Mankin. Thank you. All right, next is archives, uh, page nine. Mr. Mr. Chairman, my, my recommendation is 262-417 uh, and the department request was 252-545. There was one position which is a uh, if you look under 103 assistant that is a we bumped that up for one person as a record specialist since we'll be transferring all of the sheriff's uh, files that are down in Laverne in a warehouse and what he has in a trailer over his location once we add on to the um, new facility where John Lodel is and also will be taking files from Melissa Harrell that she has up on the f fourth or fifth floor in the new judicial building. So we wanted somebody that uh, is a specialist to oversee those uh, requests. As it is right now when um, let's say a detective uh, or someone in the sheriff's department needs to pull a file on somebody and they've got somebody pulled over in Georgia, they'll, they'll call here and they'll want to be able to get their hands on a file. And uh, so like in Laverne, we have to send somebody down to Laverne, <laughs> go inside the building, ask them to pull the file, they charge us to pull the file, um, and then they charge us to put the file back in. So we'll have somebody that will be specialized at the um, archives that will specialize in those criminal records that we have to keep indefinitely. I mean, we can't dispose of them. So that was the only bump that uh, uh, we put into that budget. Mr. Lowell, would you like to speak to the recommendation? Uh, yes. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I agree with the mayor's recommendation. I can also add that that position was actually in last year's budget at, for a half year. Um, we were going to hire in January. It turns out we just hired this March. So um, there is an increase from last year over this year based on the fact we're going from a half year salary to a full year salary. Thank you, Mr. Yodel. Any questions? for uh, John or for the mayor. Hearing no questions, do I hear a motion to amend the mayor's recommendation, recommended budget? Hearing none, we'll accept that as part of our consent agenda and move on to the next item, which is risk management, which starts on page nine. Welcome, Ms. Trelo. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, the department request is one million one fifty three two forty four. My recommendation is one million one fifty nine nine oh one. Ed, go ahead. All right. Um if you want to start with three oh seven communications, you see a little bit of an increase there. Uh, Dan Good is using a flip phone and he's also using his personal phone to take pictures. So we're uh upgrading to an iPhone there with him uh, so he can take pictures and also it's easier for him to text back and forth. Um, when you look at data processing, you see an, a bump there. Actually, the 7,000 number was the number I put in earlier. I've got a hard number there that's uh, $8,462.50. Uh, those are licenses. Uh, we have um, DocuPhase, we're adding a license. We had one license last year. We're adding a license this year. We did one license so we could see if the uh, 
if it would work work well now we need an extra license for that because this is what is fed from the Board of Education, uh, helps us with terminations, uh, new hires, and things like that. Uh, and then also we're doing a ticketing system. And what the ticketing system does is allow us to um, have any information and it's all together. So if we have a new hire, we have, um, if they bring a spouse on, you gotta bring in a marriage license. So in the ticketing system, we were able to put in the attachment for the marriage license. If they have children, we're able to put in dependent verification. And then um, it will pass, and it also sends reminders to the people to make sure that they get that information into us on time. Uh, and the most important thing to me on it is, is that it allows the entire office to go in. So if we have somebody that calls us or comes into the office, the ticketing system allows anybody to pick up that phone and answer. And so if someone's on vacation or somebody's out sick, um, they're able to answer that person immediately instead of being able to uh, having to wait till somebody comes back or get in their personal emails. So we're, we're moving away from personal emails to where it is a system to where whoever is a benefit specialist or OGI and someone calls in on something, we have somebody else in the office. If the person that they've dealt with that they may have talked to yesterday, you're able to talk to somebody else today and you also can put notes. So if somebody they talked to yesterday put their notes in there and said this person's going to call back tomorrow yada, and, and this is what we need and that person is out, then whoever answers the call will be able to uh, address that. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but last year we had like 600 new hires. Um, I don't. I know we don't have two new schools this year, but there's a lot of turnover between terminations and new hires. The ticketing system makes us a lot more efficient and more real time. So um, that's the number for it. It's the licenses, uh, dues, and memberships. If you look at it, uh, it in, in talking to the mayor. We try not to spend anything, uh, so we cut out all the dues and memberships last year uh, in trying to work within the office. Uh, maintenance agreement, that's our printer. It's about eight years old. I don't have a new printer in there, but um, that's what you see in the maintenance agreement. Uh, postal, you see that it's at 35. What I will remind you is what's about to come before the full commission Thursday is we're about to change our um, life insurance uh, vendor and we're about to change our short and long-term disability vendor. So we're going to have to have some communication pieces and we're also changing our clinic vendor. So again, there's gonna be quite a bit of communication that'll have to go out to our employees and our retirees, uh, making them aware of those changes. And Mayor Ketrin has suggested in the office supplies a reduction of $4,000. I'm, I'm hoping we can stay within that with the communication pieces again uh, and absorb that. Um, I don't see a problem with that at the moment. Um, and that's it. Now, I should have asked you on the front end if you agree with the mayor's recommendation. Uh, you've gone over most of the I'm line sorry. items where there was a change there. I, I'm sorry. The, the only thing is, is the hard number in the uh, data processing from 7,000 to 846250. Yes. Other than that, yes. Lisa, have you got the change that he's requesting? I can, and I, I guess I wanted to, to talk about is the building and contents insurance and liability insurance. We've got to increase. So those numbers really aren't hard yet either. No, not yet. So we'll be coming back probably in needing to adjust these two numbers, either up or down. When's your bid date on that? Re when, when does it rebid? Uh -huh. the, the property uh, casualty. The, the property casualty was just uh, went into effect July 1 of last year, so last we still year. have at least two more years. Two more years, mm -hmm. but increases uh, on the liability insurance and building and property insurance, uh, we can expect that. So this is basically just a, a placeholder until we know firmer numbers. Yes, yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So the bottom line change there, Lisa, what would that be? 
One million what? One million one sixty-eight three sixty-six. I'm just going to remind the uh, committee that excluding the building and contents liability insurance and the premiums on surety bonds, take those numbers out, and then this budget is funded by the insurance fund and the OJI fund. So this change is going to change the revenue number too. Okay, committee, you've heard the department's request and the mayor's recommendation. Uh, mayor, you got any comment on this? Or? No, it's a good budget. So you're in agreement with that change? Yes. Okay, any comments from the committee? Yeah, please use your mic because they can't hear you, but it's 1,168,000. Yes, sir. So moved. Okay, Mr. Johnson makes a motion to amend the mayor's recommendation. Second. To, and a second by Commissioner Dodd. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, call roll, please. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Dodd? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes, motion carries. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, commissioners. All right, our next item is the trustee, and that's on page 13. Welcome, Mr. Beatty, and go ahead, Mayor. Department request, uh, Mr. Chairman, is uh, 974-240, and my recommendation is 972-050. I'm in agreement with that. This is basically a status quo budget that really the, the change for us is in line 540, which is the tax relief program, where we match the state, uh, double what the state pays up to $306, and we just had more applicants and a little larger payout. So those are just the numbers based on what our policy is, and that's our anticipation to fund that for the next year. And I'll point out that the commission is the one who set that policy for him as far as matching those funds. So, Yes, sir. And it's a wonderful thing. Thank you. I think so, too. Any comments from the committee or anyone else wants to make a comment? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to change the mayor's recommendation? Hearing no such motion, I declare that that's part of our consent agenda, and uh, we'll move on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brady. Okay, next is the county clerk, also on page 13. Mayor. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, the department request was 1,065,365. My recommendation is 1,066,115. Okay, Lisa. Yes, I've re I've reviewed his recommendation and I agree, I agree with it. Okay, she so agrees with the mayor's recommendation. Do we have any questions for Lisa? Hearing no comments, do I hear a motion to amend the mayor's recommendation? Hearing none, we'll accept that also as part of our consent agenda and move to the next item. Thank you, Lisa. Next item is the GIS system that's found on page six. <coughs> Cody's coming up and Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the department request is 1,023,891. My recommendation is 1,001,911. Cody. Thank you, and, and we are good with the recommendation. Okay. Is this a flyover year? It, the question is if it's a flyover year. Yeah, we've, 
and we've spoken to all of our all of our customers so all the people we share the data with and they all have um, agreed that this in light of the circumstances that they can make do with uh, with not having that this year okay thank you mr chairman uh, if you'll and members look at line item 709 data processing equipment the amended budget for 2020 was 128 there is zero recommendation there uh, i want to compliment uh, mr york uh, between this budget and his it budget um, when he cut he cut um, and when i brought him on i there were a lot of things that I don't understand about IT. I'm not a I'm not an IT person. I know enough to. I've said this several times. I know enough to ask the first question, but when I get a response from an IT person, I don't know enough to ask the second question. Okay, so uh, I ask him to to look at how can we make this department more uh, lean and mean and and uh, Mr. York and his department they have really formed a team together. And you'll see between this budget and his next IT budget, um, uh, they've cut close to $700,000, um, which is, you know, I know Mr. Farley cut over a million out of his budget, you'll see in, in a later budget, but that was elimination of one truck. Cody's actually gone in and, and worked um, and, and with his department, they found ways to, to cut. And I think even going over and talking to IDB this past week, um, they had budgeted into the old judicial building six hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars, and they have found a way. They're going to be able to cut that down to five hundred thousand, I believe. They feel like they can leave with that, so uh, they've made some drastic cuts to help during during these times, and they'll be lean and mean. I appreciate that. I'm sure the commission does too. Thank you. Any comments from the committee or questions for Mayor or Mr. York? Hearing no comments, do I hear a motion to amend the mayor's recommendation? Hearing none, we'll accept that also as part of our consent agenda and move on. Thank you. And next is the information technology, and I believe you're still up. That'll be on page 14. His request, Mr. Chairman, is three million three twenty-six eight ten. Um, my recommendation is three million three eleven nine hundred. Um, we, you have reduced uh, your DP equipment and supplies line item. Um, I believe we do have, let's see, line item uh, 334, uh, which was the Microsoft countywide system. Cause, so that pays for countywide, Mr. York, is that correct? It does. That's our, uh, our master agreement with Microsoft. So that pays for all the uh, office uh, installations, um, including servers and, and basically just everything that's Microsoft, all the licenses are, are rolled into what's called a master agreement. So we pay for those for all of the, the county folks that we service. That's not counting. That's excluding the school system. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. All I got to say is, wow. Thank you. Well, and, and there's really two um, there's two things that I think we've got to point out with take with a, such a dramatic cut, and that is that, and, and I spoke with the mayor about this earlier, uh, that this is a really one-time cut. So we are putting off replacing equipment. Um, so we are going to um, make the computers and the, and the switches and the servers that we're using. We're going to make those work longer, uh, but it's really a one-time cut. So stretching it a little bit we can make that work stretching it a long way and eventually something breaks in a big way so um, hopefully we're in a different situation a year from now so uh, but that's that's really uh, what we're doing here is is finding that savings in, in a lot of that savings in equipment um, not replacing equipment and then also uh, you know I've got to mention that Darren Moore uh, who's works 
uh, in, in IT and, and is a crucial part of the team. Uh, he actually, before I came on, had identified $100,000 in recurring savings uh, by implementing a change to the way we do our digital storage. Um, and uh, really, you know, that's, that's all him. That, that credit goes to all him. So uh, luckily did, I've got a did, great team. So. He did make that recommendation for before you got hired. Yep. He came in and identified it right off the bat. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. York has al also identified a, a, an area he wants to hire a programmer, um, which I totally support uh, with all these cuts that he's been able to make is, is to allow him to hire that programmer because he feels like that with he and his team that they can start programming uh, things for our different departments, whatever those needs are, and provide those tools. And where it kills us in, in IT, as in any government or anything that you do with IT that's related, there's initial cost up front, but it's the maintenance year after year that they get you. You know, and you have to keep on paying those maintenance things. And, and if he can get a programmer to program and write code, then we don't have to pay those renewals every year. So I think they'll, we'll still continue to see savings in the future by doing that. And I think there's also a significant savings. Um, it may not be directly monetary. It may be in um, staff, adding staff and saving time and saving error by using our programmers, even if we don't replace the applications that different departments use, helping their people and helping those applications talk to each other in such a way that limits hand keying, uh, limits exporting to Excel and importing into a different system. If we can get, you know, if we can write programs to help communicate, help those software communicate with each other, uh, we can save a lot. We've actually been working a lot with risk management recently doing that very thing, helping their systems talk to each other so that they don't have to key and, with the goal of uh, preventing them from having to replace and, and bring on new people. Okay, you've heard the recommendation from the mayor and also the acceptance by the director. Do I hear any comments from the committee or questions? Hear no comments or questions. Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Robert Stevens. Yes. This is Robert Stevens. I had a question for Mr. York. How much would it cost to overhaul the county website and make it more uh, user friendly? Well, the, in our budget is actually implementing the, the it's been a while since the website's been redone and uh, the, actually the, the content management system that some of the website uh, utilizes is actually being, faded, uh, being phased out and being decommissioned. So we have to make a move and we have decided to make a move to use Drupal. Uh, which is a content management system. It's widely used, um, so we, it actually is going to save us money. Uh, they're implementing it's always difficult, and there's going to be bumps in the road, but the actual monthly costs we anticipate will actually save money from what we're paying now. And the goal is to have uh, a, a uh, content management system that will allow us to make a website that is much more um, user-friendly, uh, much more uh, customizable by departments. So the goal is to let departments uh, have the ability to make edits to their own content. So instead of having to funnel that back through to a web designer, we'll be able to give to empower uh, different directors and elected officials to make the content changes. Because we're not the content experts, they are. Uh, so we'll let them be able to make those content edits, uh, but in a way that they don't have to know how to write Code. They don't have to know how to, you know, build a website. They just click on, uh, click on a link, log in, and change the text, and it changes on the website. Um, that will also give us the ability to have a, a uniform look across and design across the website. It, it will allow us to better accommodate uh, individuals with disabilities. Um, the ADA compliance with websites, the, the Drupal's um, compl ADA compliance, so we can have a website set up that's got all of the tools that those who may be visually impaired um, can utilize, still utilize the website uh, in a functioning way. So that's a great question. Uh, hopefully that's going to happen in the next year. That would be amazing. If you go look at Hamilton County's website, Knox County's websites, they're just light years ahead of where we are 
and for a citizen out there who's trying to find uh, what we voted on or the text to one of our resolutions, it's it's almost impossible if they've never done it before to go and find the exact meeting and have to know the date of when it was done. And they may not have the amendment that's done to it. And the one in Hamilton County, you can just type in your keywords that you're looking for and it pulls up every document that has those words in it. And I would like to see us have something that's comparable or even better than theirs to make it more transparent and user friendly for our constituents. So I'm glad to hear that we're moving a different direction with that and, and upgrading. And I, I appreciate that. And I'll be sure to, to keep you in the loop so that you can uh, see and, and have some input on that, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Stevens. Any other comments or questions? Thank you. Okay, hearing none, do I hear a motion to change or amend the mayor's recommendation? Hearing none, we're going to go ahead and add the IT or information technology to our consent agenda and continue on. Thank you. Thank Toby. you, guys. Okay, next up is the pet adoption and welfare services on page 34. Michael? <coughs> Mayor? <coughs> Hi, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the department request is two million four fourteen six eighty three. My recommendation is two million two twenty one zero eighty two. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, go okay. ahead. I do. I do agree with the mayor's recommendation and appreciate the thought that went into this year's budget uh, through this process. I appreciate you stepping up and, and cutting your own budget. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mayor, is there, or Michael, is there anything in particular you'd like to point out? Or if not, we'll entertain any questions uh, from the committee. The, really, the major things that we did was we went back and looked to see where we could um, to make cuts or look at different ways of doing the same thing but doing them cheaper. Uh, the biggest changes here are uh, it's giving up the second full-time veterinarian position uh, and putting that over into all contract. You know, if you'll recall, over the last several years, we've had that position posted and not being able to fill that. Um, so this just kind of takes that out of there and saves us some of that money. Um, it does, uh, this is a budget that, that meets our, our needs. Um, uh, which is which is what we need, um, but it, there's no there's no fluff in this budget whatsoever. Okay, you've heard the comments. Do uh, any comments from the committee or questions? Chair, Commissioner Gooch, um, uh, maybe two questions on line three thirty, operating lease payments. Um, Looks like that um, you were originally asked for seventy-five thousand and got almost fifty. Could you explain what might have been cut out from there? Yes, sir. That is the line item that pays for the uh, Enterprise lease vehicles. Uh, we have one that should be delivered this week. Uh, where we get into with our vehicles, though, it takes so long to get the truck in. Uh, to the company that puts the unit on it. So by the time we place the order, it's, a, it's 10 to 11 months before we get that vehicle. Uh, we've gotten behind, there were several years uh, back before I got here when we went through that recession stuff in 2008 where we didn't get a vehicle for going on six years. So when I look at my vehicles right now, um, we've got uh, vehicles, um, I've got four vehicles right now that are above 181 to 182,000 miles. This pays for the current vehicle, plus adds an additional three next year. Um, we're in a situation right now where I'm going to be bringing a budget amendment to you next month. Uh, we have a vehicle that has a bad transmission with 200,000 miles, but I'm not really going to have a choice but to replace it just based on the time frame it takes to make these things happen. The original request was shooting for the moon and saying, let's go ahead and replace five vehicles. Uh, three was a, uh, was a, uh, the five was a want, the three was a need. Okay, and um, so his vehicles is not part of the, I guess the nature of them, part of the lease, that w the ones that we lease? 
Michael, they are. This, this is the least work. I'm sorry, Mayor. No, uh, the commissioner's question was, these are part of the lease. It's just taken when we ordered them last year, they're just now getting them. And, and the, the boxes that go on the back have to be custom made. And by the time they mount those boxes, and I believe they're fiberglass now, is that correct? Michael? Yes, sir. We are purchasing uh, fiberglass boxes, and uh, we've also gotten away from those uh, kind of a metal oven. These fiberglass boxes were equipping with air conditioning, and we're also equipping one cage with a back saver lift to try to avoid injuries. Where it kind of makes that number look a little bit odd, though, whenever um, we per whenever we lease these vehicles from Enterprise, we have to pay 50% of the capitalized price of that unit in the first year. So out of that 48,000, basically 30,000 of that is to pay for 50% of the unit up front that goes on the back. Okay, uh, thank you. And just for clarification, I think in the initial discussion y'all were saying, you and the mayor was that we're not cutting veterinarian services, it's just moving money in different line items. Is that correct? He's eliminating yes, sir. the second Perfect. veterinarian. We, we did cut the second veterinarian. So, how, so we have one veterinarian. We have one. We never could hire a second one. We've been trying to hire one for as long as I've been there, two years. And so we redistributed those funds into, Michael? Line 357. Veterinarian services. How many, how many people did you put in that line item? You got one to answer uh, the phone? Pay, um, Go ahead. We, that line pays for, right now we have two contract veterinarians that come in and we pay them by the surgery. Okay, so we have two contracts and then one? One full time. Full time. Okay, hey, thank you, Mike. Very good uh, department, I think, that he, he yes, runs in the, in the good budget. And uh, I just want to thank you for all you do for our yeah. animals out there. Just got his new roof on. I believe Ben got this new roof on. Uh, they completed that last week. And he's doing some landscaping. Uh, Mike, Mike runs a great uh, operation out there. Hey, any other comments or questions from uh, committee there, members? There was one more thing I did want to. Go ahead. May I point out one other thing, please? Please go ahead. Uh, line 399, I wanted to point that out. Uh, line 399, I wanted to point out there, you'll see a $25,000 reduction there. I did want to let you know what that is. Uh, that is our contract with all 10 animal cremation to pick up deceased animals here from Paul's as well as roadkill within the county. This is the last year of a five-year contract with them. We'll be rebidding that in January for 2021. However, under the mayor's recommendation, uh, the deputy to the mayor and I did speak with all 10, and based on our numbers being a lot different as far as euthanasia, where they were five years ago, that company has agreed to take a, um, a reduction there this year, the last year of that contract, to uh, just to help out and, and to be agreeable and, and to make everything work better for the county. So I did want to give kudos there uh, for all 10 helping to uh, go into bat just like everybody else is taking a, taking a reduction there. Thank you, Mike. Yes, sir. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, do I hear a recommendation to amend the mayor's budget, recommended budget? Hearing none, we'll also accept that as part of our consent agenda and move to the next item. Thank you, Mike. Is uh, County Commission on page one. The uh, department request is uh, 397-150. My recommendation is 392.050. Uh, if you look under uh, board and committee member fees, actually there's a reduction because we took Becky, who has now retired after taking minutes for all of, outside of finance, she took all of our minutes for all of our standing committees. And basically, I, I, we, the 9,000, under other contracted services was hers and we shifted you'll see in my budget next where we have we picked up rachel downstairs in my office and now she has taken becky's place so you'll see that addition of nine thousand dollars shifted over into my budget uh, to pick up to pay rachel for taking the minutes for the standing committees 
you know, Vicki did it all. Um, let's see, she did purchasing, and I believe uh, Laura now is picking that up. So that's all in that nine thousand dollars. So Rachel and and um, Laura are doing both the uh, both those committees that would come out of that nine thousand that's now in my budget. Okay, you've heard the mayor's recommendation and explanations there. Are there any questions on the commission budget? Hearing none, is there a motion to? How much of this, uh, uh, Mr. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. What all members uh, or what all organizations do we belong to as a member? I see we spend about 51,000 or 56,000, 51,000 on membership fees. And I just wanted to know what all we're a member of. I know you belong to the Tennessee County Commissioners Association, TCCA. Okay, that is um, County Off Officials Association, um, ATVG, Greater National Regional Council, uh, the Mayor's Caucus, GNRC, uh, Tennessee County Services, uh, Regional Transport, and Tennessee County Commission. Do we feel like all of these are critical? Because I feel like sometimes the County Commissioner Association may not have our best interest at stake. Well, uh, Charlie Curtis is the director um, of TCCA. Um, I worked with Charlie. He was uh, uh, probably one of the finest men that I ever worked with in the General Assembly. Even though he was on the other side of the aisle for me, he and I carried a, a lot of legislation. He, uh, he goes to the wall for, to represent the county commission and lobbies hard for all the county commissions. Uh, he, he does an excellent job. I, I'm sure he lives up in Sparta, White County. But um, that's the commission's decision. Well, I guess my concern is you've got the, the big counties and you've got the mid-sized counties and you've got the rural counties and sometimes everybody's interests are pitted against each other. And I just wonder if we wouldn't be better off using that money to get somebody to represent us that can be our eyes and ears up there at the Capitol and help us with education funding and so forth like that. It's just a thought. I don't want to make any kind of motion or whatnot now because I would like to know more about how much these different organizations cost. But the ones where all of the counties are in the same group, it just seems like we might be better served spending that money having somebody represent us only. Commissioner Stevens, uh, I'd like to make a short comment to that. Uh, I've been working on this commission now, it's 22 years, and uh, TCCA has been invaluable over the years as far as a resource to rely on. If you've got a question, uh, I know most of you, or all of you know Doug Beaudry, he used to be the TCCA representative for our area. And uh, anytime you picked up the phone and gave Doug a call, you got a quick response and, you know, he would certainly help you with that. And uh, I'll echo the mayor's opinion of Mr. Curtis, who's the director of the TCCA. Uh, he's a fine gentleman. And uh, Commissioner Stevens, I think you're right. We do have a tug of war going on between counties that are large versus small. Uh, that is a problem for us. But I think that, you know, if we decided we needed extra help there. It would be something outside of TCCA, but I wouldn't recommend doing away with their help. Any other comments from any of the commissioners? Hearing no other comments, do I hear a motion to change the mayor's recommendation on the county commissioner's budget? Okay, hearing none, declare that that'll be part of our consent agenda and we'll move on to the next item, which is the county mayor's budget. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, the uh, request was 915, 729. My recommendation is uh, $913,091. If you'll look at 
if you look at line item 330, that is the um, courthouse vehicle lease through Enterprise and also all the mail that is downstairs. So all mail from this office or from the courthouse uh, is paid through this line item. Um, also look at 399 under other contracted services. Um, that was originally requested uh, for the clerk's building um, at 319 Maple uh, because we now have, because of the parking issues, if you recall, uh, we were having parking issues, so we, we hired Crimson Security uh, to do that. Uh, Ms. Kroll is uh, back there. She paid for a few months out of her budget, which she had, but she didn't have it budgeted, but it served the purpose. So now we have put that into my budget to pick up the security person that works in that parking lot to keep the people from, from who go to the judicial building. He's done a fairly good job understand and also we have picked up um, for a while we were using the an, another crimson security person at the new parking garage the three-story parking garage we shifted that over while we were shut down for a few months because we were still getting young people coming into the new parking garage and so that's what that line item is is the of the 48,000 under 399. Now you go back up under, uh, there is a new position, but basically it's a wash. I have uh, talked to Mr. York, uh, Megan Schaefen, who worked in IT. She worked, uh, she's a graphic specialist, and I believe it's the 59,590. Uh, that's under line item 189. So we have shifted her over to work with Ashley. Ashley is our PIO. And between Ashley, there's a, there's a good synergy working with Megan and Ashley working together and they have been um, outstanding during this period of time. All of the PIOs, city of Murfreesboro, city of Smyrna, city of Eagleville, which is Helen, their city manager, city of Laverne's PIO, and Ashley, they have all been working very closely together to send the message out. Uh, we were all, all the mayors in the local Rutherford County Caucus were working very closely together along with Megan. Megan, uh, since they're all gonna be shifted over from IT here in the courthouse over into um, the old judicial building. I guess we need to figure out what we're gonna call that instead of the old judicial building. But uh, they'll be working together on the graphics, getting information, pushing out the message of who we are and what, uh, what rules, everything from when they first started uh, with the COVID experience, they came in, they were working on graphics, getting it up, pushing out the message about washing your hands, um, um, safe distances as, as far as six feet, all the things that the CDC was requiring. And uh, so we thought it was better than leaving it in, in OIT. We just shifted it over into my department for the same uh, salary level and same benefits. The, the functions of what Megan does is more closely aligned to what the RPIO is, is kind of what he's saying. Instead of a, a Office of Information Technology, you know, you're thinking of your, um, your computer specialist. Megan is just kind of an odd fit over there, so it just, to me, makes more sense her she being great, attached to our PIO. So that's, it's not a new position, it's just a shift of the position. Okay, you've heard the mayor's recommendation for the county mayor's budget. Do I hear any comments or questions from the committee? Mr. Dodd. You, if you would just continue, 101 and 103 both had escalations. Are they part of the same topic? 101 and 103. 101 is um, the county mayor, and that is, um, you'll see that all the elected officials, constitutional officers, chancery, 
court clerk, um, the uh, election administrator. Trustee. Uh, these trustee. are uh, trustee. Yeah, all those are based on a salary table with the state, and that's what that reflects. 103, 103 is two positions that is um, the PIO and the deputy to the mayor, and that salary is tied to the mayor's salary, the deputy to the mayor. Okay, do I hear any other questions or comments for the mayor? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to uh, amend the mayor's recommendation? Hearing none, we'll add that to our consent agenda and move on to our next item, which is environmental on page six. Thank you, Mayor. Chairman, the uh, department request is $600, and that is my recommendation as well. Okay, you've heard the mayor's recommendation. Any questions? Hearing no questions, do I hear a motion to change the mayor's recommendation? Hearing none, we'll also add environmental to our consent agenda and move on to finance, page 10. Mr. Chairman, the department request is uh, 1,366,696 and my recommendation is 1,356,581. I accept, I accept the mayor's recommendation. One of the changes that we have, it's mine is uh, pretty much a status quo budget. Um, the only change that I don't have control over is the audit services, or the comptroller audits us. They've changed state law that allows them to add 3% every year, so that is reflective, that 105, 900 is reflective of that increase. Okay, you've heard the mayor's recommendation and also Ms. Nolan agreement to the finance department's budget. Do I hear any questions for either Lisa or the mayor? Okay, hearing no questions, do I hear a motion to change the mayor's recommendation? Hearing none, I declare that that's also part of our consent agenda and agreed upon. Next, you will find on your desk in front of you a couple of budget amendments. And uh, Lisa, if you don't mind, can you yes. pick that up? Yes. So uh, the first one has to do with the um, archive department's budget. They've, uh, you know, if you remember when we met last Thursday, we were, we had a shortage in the. Um, judicial building, so we were able to cobble some money. There's also a shortage of about 300000 in the project for the archive. Um, Melissa Harrell uh, um, suggested we have the 300000 coming out of monies that we collect specifically for the purpose of storage um, and, and maintaining our records. And so that balance currently is $472,058, and we would recommend moving $300,000 from that into transfers to other funds, which is going to um, Fund 171, which is the Capital Projects Fund for the archive building. And this will complete uh, the payment with what we've already approved to uh, what the bid actually came into? That yes. That'll make it yes. entire. Okay. 
Okay, do I hear any questions on this transfer request? If I hear no questions, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Commissioner Johnson makes a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Dodd. Okay, is there any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, call roll, please. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Mr. Stevens. Yes. Oh, there he is. Mr. Allen? Commissioner Allen? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Yes. Commissioner uh, Allen and Stevens, we apologize. There's a little lag in the transmission. So, but uh, we did get your correct vote in. Thank you. Motion carries, and we'll move on to the next item, Lisa. Okay, so if you remember back in December, um, the commission approved a contribution agreement between the county and the industrial development board. This all relates to the Hillwood property. Um, that they would, in essence, pay the property tax that is listed from the uh, assessor. And they will pay it. We will turn around and make that payment to the IDB. Then it comes back to them. It's the circle. So the uh, current property tax uh, revenue, the first one that is the 2019 taxes, the 40120, 292,601 is the 2018 taxes. The interest calculation, 18,388, takes them through June 30th. Um, so it, these may change a little depending on when they actually write the check. Um, the appropriation is 633,545 that we will remit back to the IDB, excuse me, and then we will retain the 2% for the trustees commission, 12,930. Mr. Chairman, this, uh, uh, Jeff Reed and uh, Sumner Bolden, this is the conclusion of their comments to us with motion to approve. Okay, Commissioner Dodd has a motion to approve. Second. Do I hear a second? Allen, I believe. Second, Mr. Allen, okay. second. Thank you for catching that. I've got a delay here for some reason. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing no discussion. Are we allowed to retain the trustees commission? Yes, it's in the agreement. Yes, the trustee will will just because okay. of law charge um, the collection of this tax two percent, and it's a, it's um, contemplated in the agreement. Mr. Stevens, did that answer your question fully? It did. I just. I didn't want the uh, business to be set back if they were supposed to get all of their money back, so. Uh, they knew that this was a, a part of the deal. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, call roll, Mark. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes, motion carries. Committee, thank you. Uh, our next committee meeting will be Wednesday, May the 20th at 5.30 p.m. After that, we have another one on Thursday, May the 21st. That's the item we discussed uh, early in our meeting where the uh, nonprofits will be invited uh, by letter to not show up and you can read the rest of them as, as we get to them. Our joint meeting with the Health and Ed will be coming up on May the 26th. Is there any other business? 
Mr. Chairman, this is Rhonda Allen. I do have one question for Ms. Nolan. Go ahead, please. When it comes to the, um, the benefits portion and the insurance portion of the budgets that we're looking at, I don't scrutinize those too closely because I just presume those numbers are a given. I know if they're scrubbed through your office. I was trying to track and figure out on the pension contributions why some of them were up and some of them were down. And I, I just couldn't really follow that. So is there some reason that the pension contributions aren't at least consistent across the board? Does that have to do with turnover? I'm just trying to understand why those numbers would be so different. The pension contribution is just, uh, simply a calculation based on full-time salaries, overtime, longevity, part-time salaries are not included. Um, so it's really, it's, it's basically the calculation. If you see salaries go up and down, it's going to go up and down. I don't know if there was any, any one that was specific. I, I didn't know if there was something specific to that. No, they were just kind of all over the place tonight and usually you know you kind of see a pattern and i, I couldn't follow a pattern on the pensions tonight so, so about that. thank you to, to follow up you take all full-time salaries over time longevity um i think that's it and then multiply it by 10.16 Okay, Ms. Allen, did that conclude your comments? It did, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. And thank all the committee members. Uh, hearing no further business, we're adjourned.